Hey there, crew. How's everybody doing today? Matt Vassallo here with the Rhinestone World. Can you hear me? Awesome. Hey, everybody. How you guys doing? Happy early Thanksgiving. So can everybody see my screen here with the Silhouette Studio Designer Edition pulled up? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so as you know, we're going to start doing some different uh, webinars with the Designer Edition software as well as Corel Draw and the TRW Stone Wizard. So obviously we know a lot of people when they're starting out, they're, they're getting into the business. They start out with a Silhouette Cameo and the Designer Edition software because it's the most affordable to get going. And then eventually they graduate into one of the larger cutters and graduate into Corel Draw and the TRW Stone Wizard. So um, what we're going to do here today is we had a lot of questions as far as in the Designer Edition, how to create one of these kind of punch-out designs where you get the image inside it, but also add the rhinestones around like the gymnastics one that I did right here. So what we're going to do is pretty cool. That What this basically is, is it's a free paid webinar. And what that means is this is kind of some different features that we would normally go over in one of our uh, $10 paid webinars, but we wanted everybody to be able to see what actually goes on in the paid webinars as well. And anything with the paid webinars, you're always going to get the recorded version of it as well. It's one that's not normally listed on our YouTube channel, so it would only be on your order history on the website. And then we also, any of the different files that we create in the paid webinars, we actually give those files to you for free as well. So, of course, since this is kind of a free version, we're going to give the files to everybody. We're going to... We're going to go over everything here and show you the entire process of getting the stones in between this because I know this is a real popular design that's going on a lot right now. We're going to show you how to just do the original without the stones and then it gets a little bit more complex but not too bad to be able to add a perfect row of stones in between those two colors, okay? So has anybody done this design yet as far as just the regular punch out without the rhinestones? I'm sure many of you have probably done and or on our Facebook page and seen, and we did create a video on how to do just the regular part of this on our YouTube channel, but um, we're going to show you a little more complex version of it now. So what I also like to do, those of you who, just, just real quick, how many of you in the webinar today have never been to one of our webinars for Designer Edition or the Stone Wizard? Never been to one before. This is your first actual webinar with us. Okay, so I'm seeing a good amount. Awesome, awesome. So what we like to do with the webinars is I'm going to go as slow as I can to, so you understand the concept. But we're, again, we're recording this so you'll be able to watch it later and go through step by step. So some of you that try and do the design as I'm doing it here, um, it may be a little bit more difficult depending on if you have two screens up, things like that. So just remember, you'll always get a recorded version of it so you can go through step by step later as well. And then what I also like to do is I like to get all of you involved. So make sure we have over 200 of you in here right now. So make sure when you're in here that you're asking questions. So make sure we have Rudy in here now. We have... Um, I see we do have a question here as far as the mic being a little bit low. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, everybody's hearing good? Awesome. Okay, so I did have one or two was said they were having problems uh, here. Russ, turn up your computer, buddy. <laughs> okay, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this entire process, but again, you're going to get the recorded version of it, so you'll always be able to watch it later and go through step by step. But I want you guys to be able to create designs like this on your own. So, of course, we have all of our downloadable files on our website that you can purchase, but simple things like this, you need to be able to create these on your own to obviously make money and, and get custom designs to all your customers. So... South Florida Gymnastics right here, this is one of our actual designs for a local gymnastics organization. And what I did is I just created this real quick because my daughter was 
going to the Florida um, State Championship gymnastics competition. And we created a shirt for my wife real quick and a shirt for me to wear and a shirt for my son to wear. Well, very, very simple to create something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. One thing, again, as I'm going through it, I'm going to go through it one time pretty quick just to show you. And then we'll go through another one. So we'll probably create two different designs at least in the webinar here. That way you get both of those designs. And I'm going to create pretty generic ones because I want everybody here to be able to use these designs to sell to your customers as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull in a few vector files. So these are a couple of different vector files that come with our fundraising pack that you can purchase on the website. Or we sell all the different vector files as individual downloads. Or I'm sure a lot of you out there already have different vector files like this of mascots or sports or whatever it is. Okay. So real quick, which um, everybody go ahead and type in. Again, I like it to be interactive and people asking questions. So Rudy and Daniel are both here to answer all your questions that you type in. And I'm here to answer them as you're typing them in as well. But what... Um, what do we got here? What Do we have basketball fans, hockey fans, volleyball fans? And I'm going to guess that Thomas is in here. He's going to ask for wrestling. We don't have wrestling, Thomas. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of hockey, hockey, basketball, 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 hockey, hockey, volleyball. Okay, looks like, <coughs> looks like basketball. It's going to be our winner for the first design. We'll create a couple of them, so no worries. So I got my basketball here. Again, this is just a vector object there of the basketball. Now what I'm going to do is to start everything off, I'm going to come over here to my text tool. And I got my text tool, and I'm going to click into my space here in the designer edition. And I'm going to have my caps lock off, and just so everybody can use it, we always do mom designs um, that look pretty cool. This will look pretty cool with the actual basketball. And obviously, a basketball mom design is something all of you can probably use, I'm sure. So let's go ahead and type out basketball. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to an impact font. I want it to be a nice, bold font so it looks good. So font style up here, I'm just going to type in IMP and hit enter. That's going to change it to my impact font. Now, as I'm going through this, just make sure to ask questions, okay? Anytime I go too fast or you want me to repeat a step, make sure to ask questions, and I will definitely do that. And I've seen a lot of questions coming in. Are we... I am going to show you all of our Black Friday and Cyber, uh, Cyber Monday deals at the end of the webinar here to give you guys kind of a sneak peek of what's going on so you have an idea come uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday too. So no worries. We're going to get to that as well. And there are going to be some pretty awesome deals. Okay. So basketball here. A little bit too much spacing in there. So I'm going to actually go ahead and come over here. Very easy in the Silhouette Studio Designer Edition. I can just drag this down a little bit, tighten my spacing up some. I'm going to hit Control C and Control V as in Victor. And that's just going to duplicate it for me. So I just made another one. And basically, I just did that as a shortcut so I didn't have to come over here and retype everything again. I'm going to double click. Highlight my text there, and I'm just going to type out mom. <clears throat> so everybody's with me so far, right? I'm just basically typing text right now, so nothing special. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge my mom here. And I'm going to space it out a little bit this way here as well. And then I'm going to just get it to about the same width, but I want to fix my character spacing again. So again, I'm going to drag this in a little bit just to tighten that up a little bit and drag this out to there. So everybody's still with me as far as just creating this basketball mom part of the design. Everybody's good, correct? Awesome. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of them. I'm going to shift click on the second one. So I just clicked on basketball, held shift down, clicked on the second one, or we could highlight it all, either way. And then I'm going to come up here to object, and I'm going to 
group them together, okay? So these are now grouped together as one. One thing I also like to do is I just like to go and convert it to a path. And the reason why is then it gives me my real measurements of 9.4 wide by 5.3 tall. <clears throat> so normally you wouldn't have to worry about that so much. And you could, if we were just doing the regular punch out design, and you could make it this size and adjust it later. Someone tell me, why are we so worried about getting it to the exact size right now? Why is this design going to be different than if we were just creating it the other way? Anybody know? Exactly. Yep, I see a lot of you coming through here and saying, because we're obviously creating it for rhinestones. So, for example, if this were just going to be a heat transfer vinyl design or a vinyl decal, no worries, we could have it 6.8 inches, create the whole design, and then just later we could enlarge it to 9.8 or whatever we want. Well, when we apply those rhinestones to the design, that's going to be an issue. We can't do that because if we enlarge it later, it's going to increase the circles to where those stones are going to fall in, and we won't be able to brush in the stones correct. So anytime you're working with rhinestones, make sure your design is sized the exact size that you want it because as soon as you apply those stones, you aren't going to be able to adjust it much from there to get it to fit perfect, okay? So let's go ahead and grab this basketball mom here, and we're going to go ahead and change a color. So I'm going to go up here to my fill colors, and I'm just going to change it to an orange, all right? Um, common size for an adult um, women's shirt, I normally, especially when it's rhinestones, most people, the bigger the better. I normally like to be in the 9.7 to 9.8 inch range because then it's not too, too small on a plus size shirt and it's not enormously large on a small shirt. That's kind of the, the area that I found that's a good size for all of the different sizes of shirts, okay? So now you can see the little red outline there. I really don't like to see that, so I'm going to click up here on my line color and just click right here to get rid of that little outline. <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our basketball here. You can see it's the layer behind. So I'm going to click on Basketball Mom, right click, and hit Send to Back. So I just sent that to the back of the page, so this basketball was up in the front. Now what I'm going to do is just enlarge our basketball here, and we're going to put it right into about there. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you how we created this design before, okay, and what it looked like without rhinestones. So it still looks good, but I'm going to show you that feature as well. So there's our basketball perfect. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click it, and I'm going to go through it pretty quick right here because I'm going to come back and go through it again with the rhinestone part of it, okay? So a couple different things I would do here. First thing I would do is select my basketball, and depending on what size I want it, I'm going to come up to my offset fill window. I'm going to do an offset, and depending on what size I want my offset. Let's go at point zero seven and see what that does for me. So I can see my offset there. It's got a little bit of a line on the inside. So I'm going to control Z to go back. And I'm going to do an offset this time. And I'll probably want my basketball a little bit smaller. And then you know what? Let's go ahead and off center my basketball a little bit because I can see this line right here. I don't want it going through the middle of that O because it might make it not look quite as good. So we're good right there. And let's go ahead and do an offset and let's go 0 0.08 and apply. That's looking pretty good. And I'm going to bring it down here so you, I can show you. See this little line that I'm talking about? <clears throat> so that's what's going to make a difference when you're doing different designs. So you're going to see that. So basically what you need to do is just pay attention to things like that off the start. And you want to make sure that those lines aren't in there when you're creating these because it's going to cause an issue when you go to your, re your actual weeding of the design. So 0 0.0, let's go a little bit larger on it. Um, I would say an offset of, let's see what 0.1 does for us here. And that looks pretty good. Perfect circle around the outside. Okay, and I'm going to change this to a different color just so all of you can see. I'm going to change it to a green here. 
Now, what we're going to do is one thing that a lot of people, when they were first creating these designs, the step that they were missing is we need to duplicate our basketball mom real quick. So I'm just going to click on that, and I'm going to come up to my replicate window, and then I'm going to go to advanced options, and then I'm going to go same position and replicate. So it just created another orange basketball mom right on top. I'm going to click on my fill color, change the color just so I can see it, just so I can visually see a difference. Now I'm going to go click on the black for this basketball, shift click on the purple. I'm going to come up to my modify, and I'm going to hit crop. And see what that did? That cropped that purple in there, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my green. I have my green area here. Shift click onto the orange, and I'm going to do subtract. And there you go. So you have this basketball design done now, and this is ready to do two cuts with your heat transfer vinyl. So you can do this with logos. You can do it with anything you want to easily just drop an image inside. Now, if you wanted to change that purple to a different color, see how it's broken apart? Quick little trick that I know a lot of you may not know about to select all of those purples. If you come down here and select by color, and then select by fill color, click on purple, and then let's just say you want to change it to a black, and there you go. So I'm going to go through that again. I'm seeing a lot of questions coming through. Can you go back to the replicate step as well? Yep, I sure will. So let me go back here. I'm just hitting Control Z to go back. And again, I want every single one of you, again, we got 250 of you plus in here now. I'm going to go ahead and get this so all of you know exactly what we're doing before we leave here so no worries so let's go back and this is before my replicate okay so all I have is my um, contour to the outside and basketball mom there correct <laughs> so here we go orange right there we're gonna come up to this tool right here, which is the replicate window. Go to the very bottom, and you're going to have to click on, you'll probably see this off the start, click on advanced options, and then same position, and then replicate. The reason why you replicate, and I'll show you real quick, Tracy, if we didn't replicate and we just went with the black, shift click to the orange, and then we came up and cropped it, See what it does? It gets rid of all of the other for the basketball mom. So that's why we want that other one still back there behind it. Okay? So let's go ahead and boom. We're going to replicate. Drop down to the bottom. I, I like to change the color of it. It's going to visually make it easier for you to see what's actually happened. So click on the black. Shift click to the blue. Modify. Crop. And then there's our blue inside there. Now we're going to go green. So I have just the green selected now. Shift click to the orange because right now the orange is still filled. Okay. So green, shift click to the orange, modify, subtract. So basically I want the, the green to subtract the orange back behind it. So subtract, those are gone, and you're done. Okay. Everybody get an idea of it now? And all of the same steps are basically involved <clears throat> when we do the rhinestone version of it here in just a second as well. So let me go ahead and I'm going to go file and save as. And let me just save this to the desktop real quick. Basketball. Basketball Mom free design so I can save it for you guys to give to you later. Um, Kim, the reason why you offset is because you want this little white offset because the cool part about that is actually going to be the shirt showing through and that's what's going to make it look so nice. It's going to be the shirt showing through but give the basketball look but also make it easy to still read, obviously, Basketball Mom. Okay? So... Let's get rid of our basketball mom here, and now we're going to move over to Mr. Hockey Player here. So with the hockey player, here's what we're going to do. 
we're going to go same thing. So we're starting from the very beginning, but we're going to add rhinestones to it this time. So I got hockey. What's my next step from here? Which font do I want to use? This is where everybody, we're going to start getting everybody involved in here. So impact, yep. So I'm going to highlight over here. I'm going to go IMP and enter. There's my impact font. Oh, I like the participation. Everybody's helping out. So hockey. Now my next step after I enlarge it is to what? What do I want to do to make it look nicer? Got my hockey here and character spacing exactly so character spacing right down here at the bottom let's tighten that up a little bit so i would say we're pretty good right there i got my e and my k pretty close to touching there how do i duplicate it a real quick copy and paste who knows the shortcut for that control c control v retha is our winner control c control v and what, what would you guys like to have? Do you want a hockey mom or a hockey diva design? Hockey mom, hockey diva. I see diva, diva. Wow, diva it is. We got a lot of divas in here today. So, hockey diva. And let's go ahead and bring that up to the top there. Let's drop down our diva to get about the same width here. I'm going to just measure that off pretty good there. And you can use your align tools as well to center it. Now, how am I going to select? I've got Diva selected. How do I select hockey as well? Shift. There we go. Shift click. I have both of them. And then right click. And I'm going to group it together. Now, what did I say that I like to do to be able to see like the true measurements? See, this is saying 9.9 .9 right now. How can I see those true measurements? I'm going to go object, convert to path. Man, you guys are smart. Convert to path. And now, remember it said 9.9 .9 before? Now it says 9.67. But what I would also do is I'm going to control Z and go back here just for a minute. And what did I forget to do with my diva? <clears throat> you guys are helping me out and you forgot to tell me I need to fix my spacing on my diva. So... Let's go ahead and tighten up the spacing on the Diva a little bit there. So that's looking better there. And I would say we're good there. So now click, shift click. And I can also hit control G is group. So I hit control G to group and then convert to path. Now I can see I'm nine point, basically 9.7 inches wide. Okay. So we're 9.7 inches wide. We got our hockey diva. What do we want to do with this real quick just to make it easier to see our design as we're doing it? There we go. Let's add some color to it. What colors do we want this design here today? Give me give me two colors. Good color combination for you. Pink and black. We can do pink and black. Pink and black it is. It is a diva, right? So let's go up here to the top and let's do kind of a hot pink. And I am going to get rid of my outline color. So I just clicked on my line color there and got rid of that. So I got Hockey Diva here. Let's go ahead and grab my hockey player. How do I bring my hockey player to the front? Right click. Yep. Right click. Bring to front. Or you can click on Hockey Diva and send to back. So either way, whichever way you want to do it there. Hockey player. Let's... Drag him down, get him to be a good size. Now, you do need to be a little bit careful when you're doing this part of it just because you want to obviously make sure that his whole foot isn't disappeared in between the I and the V here. Now, the cool thing about this is when it has the rhinestones, it's going to give more of a solid outline of it, and you'll see what I mean in just a minute here. So I would say we're looking pretty good there. Everybody like that? Uh, someone's getting ahead of me. I like it, Susan. Susan's already given me the next steps. So we got our hockey diva here. We got our hockey player here. Now, what do I need to do with my hockey player? I need to go to which tool? There you go. Yep, exactly. So I'm going to go to my offset tool. And now a little bit different this time. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. I'm going to go to offset. And before I do offset, See how my offset is literally 
offset, like it's not centered. I was going crazy when I was trying to figure this out before. Can everybody see that? How it's obviously not centered right? And it's pretty hard to see, but let me see if I can go in and change this line color for you to be able to see it better. Can you see it better now? See how it's not offset right? And I was doing everything. I was restarting the program, and I had no clue why it was doing that. Does anybody know why it's doing that? Because it took me a while to figure out what was going on. So what I ended up doing to fix that, so you guys aren't pulling your hair out, and like, I, well, I don't have any hair to pull out, but... If if you do have hair to pull out, I would have done it. So the reason why it was doing that, I figured out, is if I go up here to object and I convert my hockey player to a path. So now I have it to a path so it gets that true size. Bobby Bell was on it. Yep. And then I come over to my offset here and I go to offset. Now watch what happens. Let me go to my color. See how perfect it is now? So that's it's going to be a headache off the start, and that's the great thing about these webinars is I can show you things like this that are going to save you time, and um, you won't be pulling your hair out as well. So that's not the actual offset that we want, so let me go ahead and delete that. But all I did is convert it to a path, just like we did to get the true size of the text. Everybody got that? Okay, perfect. Now, I haven't showed anybody this, but does anybody know what the good spacing is for this here? So the good spacing for a hockey player to get stones. So offset, and, and I haven't showed you, so it's kind of cheating because I know probably those of you who haven't done this before, and everybody's going to vary a little bit. But what we're going to use is SS10 stones. Yep, I see a lot of you have been to our TRW Stone Wizard version before. So in the Wizard, we use 0 .05. In the Cameo, in the Designer Edition, I like to use 0 .08. Okay, so I'm going to do a 0 .08 apply. So that applied that offset there. And then I'm going to hit offset again and do 0 .08 apply. Okay. And I'll show you, and let me zoom in here just so you can see. Can everybody see we have two offsets in here? Now, this is working for SS10 stones, which are the most used stones that you're going to have. So 98% of our designs we create are in SS10 stones. So I have two paths there. Can it, does anybody know why I created two paths, the first one and the second one? Man, you guys are getting good at this. Exactly. The first path right here is where I'm eventually going to add my stones to. The second path is where I'm going to do that subtract feature to get rid of the letters back behind it. So let me go ahead and show you how we're going to do that. So real quickly, first thing I want to do before I even get into any of that is I want to create my, my crop of the hockey player with the letters. So how do I do that? How do I, what, what do I need to do first to create my crop? You got it, replicate the Hockey Diva. So I'm going to go Hockey Diva. I'm going to go to my replicate. I'm going to scroll down, same position, replicate. I want to change the color. And again, make sure you change the color. It's going to make it a lot easier in the long run. Now what? How do I go ahead and do the crop of this? Who's the quickest typer? I want to crop out from the hockey player. There you go. Adrian is the winner. Click on my hockey player. So I have the black selected. Shift click to the blue hockey diva. So I just have the hockey player and hockey diva selected. Go to modify and crop. Okay. So there's my hockey player formed with the letters exactly like we want. Now, this is the stuff we haven't gone into before. So you can see my lines are still there because I want the stones to still show up, to show where his heel is and where the stick is and everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the outside offset, and I'm going to change it to a different color just so you can see. So the outside offset, and we'll change it to green. So everybody can see my inside offset and my outside one. 
I'm going to go outside offset. How do I make the Hockey Diva dis disappear from that outside offset? I'm going to click on the green. There you go. Shift, click, and subtract. So I have the green and the pink selected. I'm going to go to modify, and I'm going to do subtract. And now once I do subtract, check out what it does there. So basically, we, we have where we were before with just the shirt showing through. But now that we went through those extra steps and we have this line right here, well, how do I get stones to this line? Who's my, who's my uh, designer edition? Uh, there you go. Leah Porter is our winner. Rhinestone Edge. So I'm going to click on this path right there. I'll control Z to go back. I have this red path selected. I'm going to come up here to my rhinestones and I'm going to do edge. And when I click on edge, check that out. So there's my rhinestones. And look, because we did all those measurements before, it fit in there absolutely perfect. And I'll just change them to a black color for you. And let's go ahead and get rid of my outline on it. And even if we wanted to, we could probably tighten up that spacing a little bit. And there you go. So now you have a multi-deck design where you have your rhinestones, your blue or blue glitter, whatever you want, heat transfer vinyl, and your pink heat transfer vinyl here. So very easy to do when you're ready to cut this design. We can just highlight everything. We can come over to our actual cut settings. Um, rhinestone part is the designer edition, Jeff. Yes, the Silhouette Studio does not have the rhinestone features. You do need to upgrade to the designer edition. <clears throat> so I have this selected right here. And then if I go to advanced for my cut conditions, you're going to see I can cut by different layers. So let's just say I wanted to cut just the rhinestone part first. This will cut just the rhinestone, send a silhouette. If I wanted to cut the pink next, select the pink. That's going to cut just the pink. And then I need to cut the blue. Now, before I cut my heat transfer vinyl, who's the first on it? What do I need to do with heat transfer vinyl before we actually send it to the cutter? There we go. Leslie, Leslie, Leah, Adrian, everybody's winning on this one. We need to mirror our heat transfer vinyl. Do we mirror the rhinestone part of it to cut with the sticky flock template material? No. Exactly. So anytime you're doing a multi-deck design like we're working on here, just remember, you're always going to mirror the heat transfer vinyl part of it, and then you're not going to mirror the template material part of it, okay? Because that, you're going to brush the stones in upright, hot fix tape, and then apply it. Next question is, once we're actually pressing this design, which color... Give me the three steps of the order that you're going to press these. Like blue, stones, pink. What do we got? Give me all three of them. We're going to press what first, what second, what third. Good, 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 good. Everybody is dead on on this. Perfect. <clears throat> so everybody is saying pink, blue, and then stones. The reason why your order is pretty, uh, pretty significant when you're doing design like this is you want to make sure that when you're pressing the design, you never want to press your stones first because you can see how close our, st our stones are to our heat transfer, heat transfer vinyl part of this design. So if we press the HTV second, it's not going to get the full pressure, time, temperature, everything to adhere that heat transfer vinyl good to the garment that you're pressing to. So... What you want to do, make sure the reason why you want pink instead of blue first is pink is the full size of the design. So you can see this hockey player, it's a little bit off centered to the left here to show its stick. So if you pressed the hockey player or the blue first and didn't press it perfectly straight or rotated it a tiny bit, then that pink's going to have to go in the perfect spot so the stones fit so your whole design may be crooked. OK, so that's why you always want to press the largest part of your design first that has the full width of the design to make it easier to line up on your shirt. Press our blue second and then our rhinestones third. 
Because believe me, if you press that blue first and you put it on crooked, you're going to be pulling more hair out when you go to line that pink up and you see that it's going at a – I mean, if you want to have a little abstract 45-degree angle on the shirt, then I guess it could look pretty cool. I'm thinking most of your customers would probably want it straight across. Okay? So let me go ahead and save this design. File. Save as. And we're going to call this one Hockey Diva. Still got my caps lock on. Hockey Diva Free. And save that one to our desktop. So we got two designs that I'm going to get to you guys. And let's go ahead. Do we want to create one more so we can walk everybody through it step by step again one more time? Of course we do. Yes. All right. So let's go ahead and get rid of them. Let's drag these guys back in here. And we did basketball already. So we did basketball. We did hockey. Volleyball it is. Anybody got ideas for volleyball? What do we got? Volleyball ant. Volleyball princess. Um, it doesn't even have to say volleyball. It can say something else. Um, how about bump set spike? That would be pretty sweet, right? Yes. Winner. Okay, bump set spike. And then we'll throw a volleyball in the middle of it. That'll be sweet. So let's go bump. Oh, we want to do bump. Okay, we got bump here. What do we want to do? Man, Janice is all over it. Impact. So we're going to highlight it. Come over here. IMP for impact. Hit enter. Um, yeah, you can use other fonts, uh, Carrie. The reason why I like the impact font is because you can get it nice and close together. It's a real bold font. If the font isn't very bold, then, for example, like the volleyball or whatever's going inside it doesn't really look that great. Okay? So next step, <clears throat> I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to have to start asking you guys soon. I see everybody putting in character spacing. So... I might have to delay here a little bit. I know Mike is working on the actual Black Friday release. So as soon as he gets that to me, then we'll show it after we create this design. So we actually haven't even finished the flyer yet. They're actually still working on it as I'm doing the actual webinar here. So we got bump. We got character spacing. I see some of you are going through the entire process here. That's awesome. So you probably won't even have to watch the recorded video. All right. So bump here. What do I need to do with the bump? What's my quick shortcut to copy and paste? Who's the quickest typer? Copy and paste, quick shortcut, control C, Sue Wood is the winner. Control C, control V, and control C, control V. Now we got bump. We're going to go set. And we could do it, you know what? I'm going to try something different here. Let's try it. Let's try and mix it up a little bit and spike. Just to add a little something different to this. And you know, the funny thing is, as we're doing this uh, class right here, Rudy and myself are, are the ones who are mainly trying to learn everything with the designer edition. So what will happen is people will say, hey, can can we do this? Can we do this? And I think, and I'm, I'm like, well, I don't have a clue, but I'm going to go into Designer Edition and find out how to do it. So the cool thing is, is even with Corel Draw and everything else, everything's normally named different, but a lot of the functions are somewhat similar as far as different things. So character spacing, I want to space that out a little bit because I don't want it too close there with the K and the E. And now here's what I'm going to do here. Check this out. I'm going to take set, and I'm going to shrink it down here. Then I'm going to come over to my, not my replicate. Let's find out, I think, rotate right here. I'm going to go to my rotate tool, and let me go there. Okay, so can everybody see what I'm getting ready to do here? Again, I don't want it just to be three letters right in a row, adding a little bit of creativity to it. And we're going to go bump, set, and spike. 
Make the stretch the bump out a little bit here. We're going to have to move this down so it's the same height as my spike. And I would say that's looking pretty nice right there. What do you think? You guys like that? Let's get my S down here a tiny bit. But again, it added a little different dimension to this design because it, we didn't just type out bump set spike. Okay. So what do I need to do with my bump set spike here to get it going, to start going on my design? Yep. Okay. We need to group it together, then convert it to a path. So shift click on those. I have all three of them selected. I'm going to hit control G as in group. And then I'm going to go object and convert to path. Now it's my path and I can see it's eight inches by six inches. We're going to make this a nice big design here. Let's go to nine inches by 6.7. We can even go a little bit bigger and 9.5 by seven. Pretty good size design right there. Now I'm going to come up here and what do I do want to do with this so we can see it a little bit better, of course. Yep, we want to fill it. All right, color choices for this round. What do we got for color choices? We got a green, blue, orange, green, orange, black, green, and yellow, yellow, and green. Okay, yellow and green. It looks like everybody's liking yellow and green. So let's go to our fill here. Let's go to yellow, and we are going to get rid of that red outline. We're going to, how do I get this to the back? So I got my bump set spike. Obviously, I want my volleyball up front here. Yep, right click, send to back, and we have my volleyball here. So <clears throat> remember, you don't always have to, and I'll show you with this. Yes, we could make the volleyball this big in the design, and we could easily do that, but you don't always have to use the entire design for it. So I think just depending, let's just see what it looks like just since it's easy to do. So I'm just going to go to my offset there, and I'm going to just do a, a smaller offset here. I'll go 0 0.06. See my offset? See how it's not centered right? Do you remember how we fix that? There you go. Convert the volleyball. So object, convert the volleyball to path. Now I'm going to click on the volleyball, offset, boom, perfect offset. Let's go ahead and take that perfect offset and make it 0 0.06 and apply. We can even go smaller than that if we wanted to. Had a couple questions coming in. Um, oh, Bobby. Bobby was helping me before before we even uh, before I even notice it. Bobby was saying, make sure you convert the volleyball to a path. Thank you, Bobby. So. If I change that offset, let's just say we did it at 0.15 here or whatever it is. But I can also just drag it here and go a little bit smaller. So let me go ahead and oh, control Z here. And I'm going to get rid of, don't want to get rid of that. Let me get rid of this red here. And I want to find a kind of magic spot to where it's not going to, what, we're, what I'm basically looking at right now is how difficult is it going to be to weed because of the spacing inside this volleyball here. <laughs> so as I do this, and I go to my offset here, I'm at 0.125, let's go 0 0.04 and apply. And we should be able to trim that out, not too bad. So let's give that a try. So we should be able to trim this out okay. So I'm gonna change my color of it here just so we can see it. Then what do I need to do with this? I got my bump set spike. I want to go ahead and work on my, um, yep, 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 duplicate, duplicate, replicate, replicate, all of them, all the same. Yep, so I got bump set spike. I'm going to come up here to my replicate. Let's go down to the bottom. Let's replicate it. Let's click. Let's change it to another color so we can see it. Now what? Correct. You got it. Click on the black, shift click to the orange, and crop so that crop that out there and now there you go click on the blue shift click to the bump spike and subtract and that's going to run through it and what 
we're going to do with the subtract there is get it out of this part. So what colors did we say? Orange and green, was it? So to select all the orange, and I went through this real quick earlier. If I want, I'll do a rhinestone one of this too. Yep, I'm going to show you that as well. I'm going to actually do two of these designs for you. You guys are going to get, get some extra bonuses here today. So, yep, select by color. So remember, at the very bottom left corner here, select by color. Then by fill, I'm going to select the orange. So I have just my orange selected. And then I think we said we were going to change this to a green, right? So we have our yellow and green here. Now here's what we really need to look at is we just need to see what we need to know what type of material we're going to use. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm going to select all of this and just change it to a black so you can see. So see the black right there? We just need to make sure <coughs> that we are using a material that is easy enough to weed or because some of this gets really skinny in here. So if we were using something like uh, just the regular Caesar Easy Weed, these wouldn't be an issue at all. If for some reason you were using glitter, honestly, I would probably come in and just get rid of, oh, just get rid of some of these areas in here. And if you get rid of these, what you're going to see is different areas so you always want to know what you're going to cut so my easiest way to do this I'm trying to we can do it right on the fly right here is I'm going to select my green and I'm going to go control G so I grouped all my green together now what I'm going to do is just move that out of the way and I'm going to get rid of these little areas in here because these would be a nightmare to weed has anybody ever tried to weed the little areas like this it gets to be a pain. So I'm just going to actually go ahead and make it a whole lot easier and think ahead before I actually cut something like this to make the weeding process a whole lot easier. And it's, again, it's going to save you some hair. So let me go to here, delete all of that. Delete that there, delete that there, and then we're going to grab our ball right here and move that back. Okay? So now this is going to be way, way easier to weed this actual design because, and it looks like, see this little green area right here? So I'm going to control object ungroup and that little green let's go ahead and get rid of that as well so now we're perfectly done you can still very easily weed this design and read it but this is going to save you a lot of time when it comes to weeding honestly as far as the weeding process of this design just making those very little changes right there probably turn this into a five minute weeding job from a 20 minute weeding job just because of all those little areas that are going to be a pain to see every time okay <clears throat> so let's go ahead and go file save as and we are going to save this one as bump set spike that dang capital letter bump set spike and save so we got three free designs for you already and now what we want to do is, let's go ahead and get rid of that. We have our volleyball here. So we got one more that we can, uh, we can do for you right here. And what do we have? What's our, between the, the three that we have here, what do we want one more of? Do we want a volleyball one, a hockey one, or a basketball one? And what would you like it to say? It must be winter because I see a lot of hockey fans in here. Hockey, 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 basketball, hockey. Okay, bas um, um, hockey is definitely by far getting the most votes. Okay, so what do we want it to say? We already did a hockey mom one. We're going to run through one more here real quick. Um, hockey sister, that was the first selection. 
Ho- well, we got a hockey mom, Dad. Do you want or a hockey? Sorry, we have a hockey mom design. Would you rather have a hockey dad design, obviously with no rhinestones, or a hockey sister design with rhinestones? Sister or dad? Let's see. Sister, sister, sister. Wow, everybody in here likes rhinestones. Sister, 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 sister. All right, couple dads, but hockey sisters are winner. So let's go ahead and create that real quick. Text tool. Obviously, you know we're typing out hockey. So hockey. Next step. You guys are going to give me every step here. So next step. Yep, impact. Got it. Next step. Spacing, got it. Next step, Control-C, Control-V, got it. We're going S-I-S-T-E-R. Spacing's looking pretty good on Sister already. We can adjust it a tiny bit here. Yep, spacing's looking good there. And enlarge that a little bit. Move it up to the top a little bit there. So we got our hockey sister. Next step, group. Yep. Highlight control G to group it. Then convert to path. You guys are on it. Object convert to path. Next, resize. Roberta all over it. We're going to go about that 97 range, 9798 range. Color, there we go, fill the fill the colors. So let's go with, uh, we'll just go with the red here. And we will take off the outline. Next, hockey guy. Yep, bring the hockey guy to the front or move the text to the back. You got it, so right click, send to back. Size your hockey guy, perfect. What else do we need to do with Hockey Guy? Next step with the Hockey Guy, convert it to Path, Leah Porter all over it. So Object, Convert to Path. That way we get the nice outline. Um, before we replicate the wording, now, or the wording, what do we need to do before we replicate the wording on this? Offsets. Yep, so let's create our offsets because that's what we need to replicate the wording. So position them right. And we are going to go offset. What offset are we looking at? 0 0.08. That's what we found out was good for SS10s. So I'm going to go here to 0 0.08 and apply. And next, ooh, we're off there. Hold on. Did I not convert him to pass already? Object, convert to pass, offset. Yeah, that looks better there, I think. Okay, I didn't convert to the pass. Sorry, that was my fault. You guys were on it. And then next, yep, select it again and do another offset at 0 0.08 because we're doing the rhinestone version, right? So another offset at 0 0.08. You guys are perfect. Shift, click, modify, and crop. Replicate. Perfect. So I got my hockey sister up at our replicate, click to the very bottom, same position, replicate, there you go, change color, Janice and Mary all over it, change our color to whatever we want, let's change it to a blue, uh oh, who's, who's got me, oh there we go, Alicia crop, shift click on the black and the wording there, and we're going to go modify and crop. So we got our hockey player in there. Next, outside layer change colors. Perfect. Outside layer. And we're going to change that to a green real quick. Oh, I selected the inside layer. No worries, though. So just make sure we got the outside offset there. So click off. There I have the outside one. Change that to a green. And then we want to subtract it, shift click to red, perfect. So modify and subtract. That's going to get rid of all of that. And then what do we got to finish her off here? Rhinestone edge all over it. So we got this line right here selected. And we're going to go over here to rhinestones and click on edge. 
Now we can adjust our spacing to whatever we want. Let's just change these to black so we can see them a little better and take away our outline. Back to our rhinestone edge and let's change it to maybe a 0.3 spacing. See what that does. And that's doing pretty good right there. So I think we're looking good to go. Can anybody see? And I see one little thing, one little thing here at the very bottom in this S area. Can you see something that's just going to cause a little bit of an issue? Yep. Steve's got it. Yep. Okay, perfect. So I'll show you what I'm looking at. And it's, it's something small. But it's something, again, we'll just save you time. See that real, real, real little piece of the red right there? That's something that we don't really need. So just go ahead and delete that small little spot right there. And then also the back of the foot on the right side. Let's check that out. Back of the foot. on Now that blue right there we would probably keep. That's going to be big enough to go ahead and weed. So that one won't have an issue because that's keeping that E going. And that red right there is probably going to be big enough as well. So we should be able to get away with those. It was just that real, real small piece because that's going to keep the nice definition of our E and sister there. <clears throat> what about the O? I'm checking in the O. This little red area in the O right here, Shelby, you should be able to get away with that as well. And worst case scenario, if you don't get away with it, it's still going to look good with the stones there forming that O right there. But I would think, depending on what material you're using, you could probably get away with that one as well. Okay? Perfect. Does everybody think that they have an idea of how to do this now? And again, I'm going to get your recorded version of it, but, I mean, you guys were walking me through it steps well before I actually even got to it. So I think... Everybody in here that's that's been kind of paying attention on everything has an idea of exactly how to do this. Let me go ahead and save this real quick just so I don't forget so we can get you this file. And this one is going to be Hockey Sister. I can always forget to take off the caps lock. Hockey Sister Free and hit OK. So, I mean, just – and again, this is an idea of – what the paid webinars that we have are like. We like to get you involved. We like to get a little bit more complex with some of the designs. And we want to make sure that, obviously, all the designs that we create where it doesn't necessarily happen in all the free ones is we give you these designs for free as well to use for your customers. So what I'm going to do real quick right now is I am going to try and get a hold of Magic Mike here and see if he has something for me to be able to show you with the Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals. So let me – Rudy just walked in and hand me something here. So I'm going to see if I can uh, see what's going on with this guy. So let me try and pull this up real quick. And we should have a – PDF version of what's going on. But before I get this going right here, does what questions does anybody have? Oop, there it is. There it is. Go away. Go away. Um, real quick, what questions does everybody have as far as what went on here? Everybody obviously saw what happened, saw like the different features of how to add stones for everything and, and feels like with your Silhouette Cameo, you can obviously do designs like this now. And again, we want you to be able to use the designs that we gave here for free, but we also want you to be able to create something custom because you might not want to create a basic hockey sister design. You might want to create a Mustangs hockey or, or Flames hockey or Flyers hockey or whatever it is for your local organization or school that's going to make you a, a lot of money. So like I showed you earlier, this actual image here, and let me pull that back in. This one here, when we wore this to the gymnastics competition, we were taking orders there. I mean, everybody there loved the shirt. Everybody there wanted them. We had um, different um, moms and dads from other organizations that were asking where we got the shirts from. So of course, we handed out cards to them. So 
everywhere you go, you're going to be able to advertise, and that's what's great about uh, the business that we have like this. Um, we did have a question here, and let me see. I had a couple questions coming in. What is the max height for a shirt design? You'll notice people are doing a lot of different things with the shirt designs now. Some of them are getting up to 10, 11 inches tall and just getting real bold designs out there. So you're seeing a lot of that nowadays. So it all really depends on what the customer's looking for as far as the size of the design. Um, if you're not adding stones, do you still need the offset? Antonio, yes, you're still going to do the offset. You're just going to do one offset and not as thick. And you'll see when you'll see it again when you see the recorded version as far as what I'm talking about. And we've we did that with two of the designs in here. Um, we had a question as far as the cutting with the blue. Well, with the cameo, since we don't have the boxes around it. If you go to your different cut settings and you have your advanced settings there and you cut just the blue, it's going to cut just that blue, okay, or just the black or just the red. So it isn't going to waste any extra of your material. So you're good to go with something like that. Um, what you may want to do is possibly draw a box around it to see, okay, so then it's easier to see when you actually cut it. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you all again very, very much for coming. Uh, we will be getting these Black Friday, Cyber Monday deals. The Black Friday ones will be listed uh, Friday at midnight Eastern Standard Time, so right after you're nice and full from that awesome Thanksgiving dinner. But appreciate you all stopping by. You guys all have a happy Thanksgiving. Spend time with your friends and family. You guys have a great time. We appreciate all of you. Uh, thank Rudy and Daniel over here for answering all your questions throughout the webinar here, and I hope uh, the Silhouette Designer Edition webinar helped all of you guys out. So if you do have any questions, like always, give us a call. The number is 941-755-1696. This is Matt, Rudy, and Daniel with the rhinestoneworld.com, and you guys all have a great day.